Hello, and welcome along to the next in this series of uh, videos that are focusing on using and setting up the Chocolatey uh, Quick Deployment Environment, QDE. So, so far we have uh, downloaded and extracted the uh, image and we've loaded it into VMware Fusion, which is what I have available to me on my Mac here. So now that we've done that work, we've got a fully running machine that is ready to be set up with uh, Chocolatey and all of the uh, licensed Chocolatey components. So just to show where we are, this is the brand new uh, running instance of this machine. I haven't touched the, anything uh, on it yet. So I'm just gonna bring up a PowerShell window here and I'm just gonna set the uh, font so that it's a little bit clearer on the video. So let's bump this to 28. So in this window, if I run uh, Choco, then we can see that Chocolate is installed, but we don't as yet have a, a licensed version of Chocolate on this machine. All we've got is the open source version. Now, the way that we are gonna get that is we're gonna look at this uh, readme.html file that's on the file system here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that uh, Google Chrome can always be used for doing that. So this file contains lots and lots of information about setting up uh, all the pieces that still need to be configured on uh, QDE. Now, there are a little bit of, uh, a little a couple notes that I wanna uh, make sure that we talked about uh, on the, chocolatey.org uh, documentation, there is a uh, discussion around uh, DNS settings. Now, by default, the QDE environment is configured to uh, use DHCP, uh, which just makes the installation of certain things a little bit easier. Uh, likely, that's something that you're gonna need to change uh, within your environment. I, in this setup that I have here, I'm just gonna leave it set up uh, in the same way that it is just now. So with that done, the first thing that I need to do is I need to uh, create a license package. Now, the reason that we create a license package is uh, by default, when you're uh, installing Chocolatey and you're setting up different clients, then the license file is needed to exist on each machine. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a license package from the uh, Chocolatey license.xml file that you will have got from uh, the support team when you uh, registered for or you uh, renewed your license, you will have a, you will have a Chocolatey license.xml file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that license.xml file and we're gonna package it up into a Chocolatey package. So then when it comes around to um, installing a new client or setting up a new machine, then we can install that chocolate package from our Nexus repository that we have within the QD environment. And then uh, going forward over time, when that chocolate license expires, we can, uh, we, chocolate can give you a new chocolate license.xml file. You can create a new license package with a new version and you can upgrade that. So it's, a, it's an easy way of uh, keeping that license package uh, up to date and deploying onto each of your machines. So what we're being told to do here is we're going to being told to navigate to the C program data folder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So in program data, chocolatey, and then license, you'll see that currently there's no chocolate license to XML file in here. So I'm just gonna grab one that I have on my machine. I'm gonna go paste this over into here. And with that done, uh, what it wants me to do is it wants me to run this uh, create license package.ps1 file. Now, obviously, um, I know the contents of this file and I know what it does, um, but I would recommend that anyone running QDE for the first time, being what, who, wants to, who wants to get familiar with it, uh, definitely take a look at this. So here's the license, create license package.ps1 file. And we can see uh, in here, we'll be able to see uh, what, let me just zoom in here a little bit as well and make that a little bit easier. Can I do that? Here we can. So, uh, what it's going to do, it's going to read the chocolate license.xml file, as I said, it's going to do, it's going to create a package, it's going to uh, set the new spec file, it's going to create a chocolate uh, install.ps1, all the things that we need to do uh, to make that package. And then ultimately then what it's going to do is it's going to push that uh, nutkeg up onto our Nexus repository. So we'll, we'll look at the Nexus repository uh, in a later video, but just understand that as part of running this script, it will have done that work for us as well. So I'm gonna say no to that at the minute because we could we can come round to finding out why that package is outdated later. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go back to my administrator shell that I opened up before, and I'm gonna uh, paste in that uh, running of that create license package of PS1. So I'm just gonna kick that off. And what we'll see here is that what's gonna happen on 
the setup folder is now it's created a new chocolate license 1.0.0 nupkeg. So that contains our uh, chocolate license or XML file. And then if I clear the screen here and I run Choco now, we'll see now that we are running the business version of Chocolatey. So rather than the open source version that we were using before, we've now, by running that script, we have enabled the license component of uh, Chocolatey on this machine. Now, the other script that it wants us to run is it wants us to run uh, a script to enable uh, Chocolatey Central Management. So out of the box, Chocolatey Central Management isn't running on this machine um, or it isn't configured to run on this machine just yet. Uh, so we need to run this script uh, to enable that. And what we will then be able to do is we will then be able to uh, log into the uh, Chocolatey Central Management website. So I'm going to take this script and I'm going to run it because it does take a little, uh, it takes a little while to run. So I'm just going to clear the screen here and I'm going to paste this in to enable those uh, different components. Now, one of the things it's going to do is that once you install Chocolate License on a machine, what we do is we generate a uh, unique GUID for that machine. Now, obviously, we have a base image here that um, has chocolate license installed on it. So everyone will have set that same GUID. So uh, one of the things that this script does, and you'll see it come up in the output here, is it re restores that GUID so it's unique to the installation environment. So that's what this removing machine GUID was doing there. It's gonna set that back to a new GUID so that uh, once this machine is reporting in, it's gonna report in with that unique GUID per your environment, and um, it will then be able to uh, report in correctly and there'll be no uh, ambiguity about uh, where that comes from. So I'm gonna let that run, and uh, what it's doing here is it is, so we can actually go and look. So in the script again, um, before running a script on a machine, you know, make sure that um, it's doing everything that you expect it to be doing. So we're, we're down at the point of um, installing new components. So what it's doing is it's installing a chocolate agent and updating it to use the, uh, or is installing Chocolate Agent and it's installing the management service. So these are the components that uh, weren't installed previously, and those are the two uh, primary components that are needed for uh, Chocolatey to be able to talk to uh, central management. And then it's got a final step there, which is to fix up the database connection. Uh, the reason that that is happening is um, that's detailed in part of the documentation, but essentially what we're doing there is we're just making sure that the connection string that is used to communicate to the database on this machine uh, is the same for each of the uh, chocolatey uh, central management components. I'm just gonna go ahead and close those out. Uh, that's the other thing I should have mentioned is that on this machine, SQL Server is installed. So if you need to look at the database for whatever reason, then you have access to the uh, SQL Server Management Studio, and that will be able to uh, connect to the uh, SQL Server database, which by default is uh, what uh, Chocolate Central Management uses as the backend data store for uh, all of its information. So I'm just gonna let this uh, finish out. This is the last thing it's gonna need to do. So hopefully it won't take too much longer. That SQL Server Management Studio just opening in the background. I'll just close that out. Don't actually need that right now. I just wanted to show that uh, the SQL Server Management tools are installed on this machine. <clears throat> and then once that's done, so that's done now. If I scroll down a little bit here, then what we'll see is that there's a link here to the Chocolate Central Management uh, Server. So I'm just gonna right click on that and say, open a new tab. The important thing to uh, note here uh, is that this is the default username and password for uh, logging into that website. And once you log in, you will be prompted to change that on the first login. So we'll go ahead and we'll get logged in and we will change that password up. And there's a note here, you'll see two packages uh, listed as outdated. Uh, these packages are pinned to that version as they're required. So what that's saying is if I go here and I log in with CCM admin, and the default password, I can say, we'll be prompted to change that straight away. So let's go ahead and get that changed to something that we can use. I'm gonna say never to that for just now. So with that done, and I'm gonna say never to that as well, then 
we'll see here that what's happened is because we've enabled CCM is that this machine has checked into itself. Um, so what we'll see here, if we click on computers, is that there are no computers there yet, but that's because, I don't actually know why that is. I would have expected that to have been checked in. So let's go and have a little play here just to see what's going on. So chocolate agent is running and central management is running. So I would have expected that to be checking in. So let's go off script a little bit and see what's going on. So I'm gonna look at the logs here. So chocolate agent log is in tool service logs chocolate agent. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom in this file. And it says unable to locate the CCM certificate. So that suggests to me that the CCM service potentially wasn't running. So I'm going to look at the service log here and look at logs. And so it was running. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to restart the chocolate agent. So in this version of CCM, which is 011, one, one, uh, the first time you run Chocolate Agent, it will attempt to communicate with uh, CCM. If, it, if for some reason that service isn't up or it's not running, then you will see a failure. And that's what was happening here. Now, in the new version of CCM, there is a little bit of a retry loop that happens now. So if it's not able to, for whatever reason, connect to the CCM service uh, initially, it will uh, back off and it will try it again. So I think all we need to do here is to restart this service. And if we look at the log, let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna put the tail on here uh, and see what happens. So with that done, Let's watch it flow through. There we go. So CCM certificate installation was successful and now it's reporting in the packages. So um, during the restart of those things, uh, there must have been a disconnect between the CCM service running and the chocolate agent service starting up. So now if we go back to CCM service and we do a refresh here, there we go. Now we've got uh, one machine. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. So we've got one machine reporting in, which is chocolate server reporting into itself. And if we click through that, we will see that these are the packages that are installed on this machine. And the note that I mentioned before within the readme suggested that this would be listed as out of date. Now that would only happen if the uh, sources that were available uh, include the uh, chocolatey community repository. So if we look here at chocolate source, then the community repository is actually disabled. So that's why we're not seeing those packages as being marked as outdated, because the only ones that we have available are uh, the one that we want. So that note's not quite right, uh, but there is a scenario where if you re-enable that, it will uh, be marked as outdated, but the important thing to take away from that is that we are pinning to a specific version because that is the version that we need in order to host this website. Okay, so with that done, uh, back in the README, uh, where it's gonna want us to go next is uh, having a look at uh, our Nexus repository, making sure that that's set up, and also uh, setting up and configuring Jenkins. So we'll do that in the next video. Hopefully see you there.